In July, I traveled to Israel for the first time in 15 years. I know, it's a really long time. You may have read my letters home to Barnard during this quick solidarity mission, which was sponsored by the Jewish Federation of Northern New Jersey. After the two-week conflict with Gaza this past spring, and with what turned out to be a very short window of respite from COVID transmission, it was a relatively easy decision to join the trip. I went with open eyes and an open heart, holding both my love for our spiritual Jewish home and my concerns about certain practices and policies woven into life there. I'd like to talk with you today about deepening or cultivating your relationship with Israel through the framework of Reform Jewish Zionism. In 19th century Germany, Reform Judaism came to be as an alternative to the binary that existed about how to live as a Jew, what we would now call orthodoxy or nothing. Reform Judaism invited folks into a new premise, the opportunity to learn and then make meaningful, often nuanced choices about how to live as Jews while fully immersed in their secular worlds. It is an and way of living, in our case, as Jews and Americans. Being reminded of our Reform Jewish and way of living offers a framework to help us nurture our Reform Zionist love of Israel. Reform Zionism is a continuation of the early Zionist dream to foster a living, breathing national culture that represents the highest ideals of Jewish peoplehood. Reform Zionists believe that a Jewish state must be a democratic state that celebrates the pluralism of Jewish practice and identity. We reject the either-or binary of Israel as either Jewish or democratic, and instead use our Reform Jewish principles to shift the paradigm. We, Reform Zionists, can care about Israeli lives and Palestinian lives. Reform Zionist organizations and congregations in Israel work on behalf of pluralism in Israel for all citizens and lift up the right to dignity and quality of life for all people, engaging with the complex realities that entails without abandoning our support for Israel as the Jewish state. It is with this lens, my identity as a Reformed Zionist, that I traveled to Israel as I wrestled with what is complicated and also allowed my soul to be filled with the particular magic and holiness of our spiritual home. I'll share with you a few of my most significant experiences and learnings, and then invite you to join us to further connect with Israel through Reform Zionism throughout the year. Beautifully painted bomb shelters punctuate the landscape all around the region known as the Gaza Envelope. These are the Jewish communities around the perimeter of Gaza. They form basically the shape of a business size envelope, and given their proximity, are also the most at risk to missile and rocket fire from Gaza. These bomb shelters are in locations about 15 seconds apart by foot, as this is about the amount of time one would have to find cover when a warning siren goes off. And parents who send their kids out to play or pick up milk direct them on the route with the most accessible bomb shelters. Just imagine that. Under the auspices of our federation, we visited a few different organizations in this region that we support, learning about how these communities dealt with the confluence of war and COVID. It won't surprise you to know that the burden was heavy for everyone. We learned about resilience centers, which are not actually physical places. A resilience center is a concept. It's about building support networks to navigate trauma. It's not about teaching people to bounce back or move on. It is about moving forward with our experiences. This spring's violence spread, as you know, to parts of Israel that had previously been spared sirens and rockets. All of a sudden, the professionals who had been working for years 
in building resilience centers in the Gaza envelope were in high demand throughout the country, providing support to Israelis, Jewish and Muslim alike. At one site visit, I asked the director if there was any opportunity to offer this kind of support to children in Gaza, also living through trauma. She told me that she had once been contacted by a Palestinian child psychologist who had been hoping to learn and bring back some of this methodology to his own community. Unfortunately, it became clear that his Palestinian community would not keep him safe if he were collaborating with Jews in Israel. So the answer to my question was no. There was no opportunity to support the children of Gaza. No opportunity to intervene in a cycle of anger and violence. No tools to deal with the helplessness and fear that the children on the other side of the border surely experience as well. As a reform Zionist, I'm angry that so many people live anxiously waiting for the next siren, the next missile, and that there is no partner in Gaza with whom to imagine a different reality. And I am awed by the resilience of all who live in the Gaza envelope and proud that our Federation supports this work. It's worth pausing for clarity here for a moment to make a note of the different words I'm using. Israel is home to people of multiple faith traditions, Jews, Muslim, Christian, Druze, and more. Israeli citizens of different religions can vote in national elections. There are also areas or territories where residents are just that, residents, but not citizens. They can vote in local, but not national elections. And in many cases, they have no desire to become Israeli. They are Palestinian Arabs, in this case, who happen to reside within Israel. We had the opportunity to talk on two occasions on the trip with a woman named Heba, a Palestinian Arab who works for the American Joint Distribution Committee and who lives in East Jerusalem as a resident but not a citizen of Israel. Heba shared what it was like to grow up and raise children in East Jerusalem the poverty, the inequality, the treatment she received, and the occasions when she was unable to easily return home to her children after a day of work in West Jerusalem. She's an exception, a university-educated woman who speaks Hebrew and English and works in West Jerusalem. She spoke honestly with us about the lack of social services available to the residents of East Jerusalem. When COVID arrived last year, this community had to create, on its own, the facilities to care for the sick. Ironically, this urgency made it possible for health directors there to meet with health directors in West Jerusalem, an important moment of coming together. Like many Arabs and other minorities throughout Israel, she felt directly the pain of limited access to Israel's considerable resources, including first world health care, Unfortunately, it is usually the Jews who live in what we would see as first world Israel, while non-Jews continue to struggle. Heba is a smart, articulate, courageous, funny feminist, a trendsetter in her community. She was honest with us. She is not particularly interested in talking about two states or shared societies, a phrase I will return to in a moment. She has a different mission in mind. I asked her what she wanted me to share with you about the work we, our Jewish communities here in the States, could do to move toward a different tomorrow. Heba wants us to learn about the gaps that exist in these neighboring areas. It is most important, she shares, that residents of East Jerusalem are given the opportunities to have hope, tikva, and to live with dignity, kavod. When we give people this opportunity to participate in the Israeli community by, for example, improving and expanding education, individuals will be able to go to universities, like Hiba did, join the workforce, and more organically change their own understandings of and connection with the state of Israel. For me, as a Reform Zionist, Hiba's words are a reminder that we need to be open enough to learn and to listen to, and to advocate for the opportunity for each person to live with dignity and hope, whether that person is a Jew, an Israeli Arab, or a Palestinian Arab in East Jerusalem. Israel needs us to be those advocates. 
Hours after arriving in Israel, after a number of COVID tests, we made our way over to the Knesset, where we met with member of the Knesset, MK, Idan Roll, the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. It's worth noting here as a point of Reform Zionist pride that M.K. Roll is a proud Israeli Reform Jew, one of a growing number in positions of leadership in Israel. There is an unprecedented coalition in place right now in the Knesset in Israel, the most diverse group of leaders ever to lead, including representation from an Arab party. One message we heard clearly from M.K. Roll is that their work right now is in building relationships internally, listening to the voices of people newly empowered to speak, and staying focused on what is actually possible to achieve. For M.K. Roll, a gay man, this includes working within a Knesset that will not champion the causes of the LGBTQ community. Our voices can help Israel become more pluralistic, more representative and accepting, of the many different ways we know people can live as Jews. In the prior government, then Prime Minister Netanyahu broke his promise to enlarge and formally establish an egalitarian prayer space at the Western Wall. At this time, there is a large men's section, a smaller women's section separated by a mechitza, a divider. The space is governed, as you probably know, by orthodox rules for religious practice and is often filled with Jews who are hostile to women's full participation in worship and ritual or any kind of egalitarian service. The only way for liberal communities like ours to be fully included in religious practice at the Western Wall is to create this third space. It has been mostly undeveloped for a long time now. M.K. Roll was optimistic that this Knesset would make good on that promise to connect and complete this space. There will be other issues too around pluralism in Israel that need our attention, like treating rabbis equally, regardless of their denomination, and thereby recognizing non-Orthodox conversions and marriages. As Reform Zionists, we know that any whole vision for the Israel of our tikvatenu, of our hope, requires that all Jews can practice equally. Which brings me to our opportunity to learn, build relationships, and support progressive Jews in Israel. For years now, we have had a relationship with a reform congregation called Kehilat Yozma, which is in Modi'in, a suburb of Jerusalem. The sister relationship is important for both congregations. In addition to much needed financial support we provide, our connection makes it possible for Israeli reform Jews to learn about life here. Right now, they also really want to support us as we navigate the anti-Semitism that keeps popping up and as we search for language to live, to live as Reform Zionist American social activists. Like American Reform congregations, Israeli Reform congregations are pivotal to the work of dialogue and community building. They are leaders in cultivating relationships with neighbors, Jews or Arabs, and working to address inequality and inequity in Israel. Shared society is a concept I was introduced to on this trip. It refers to building relationships between and equity for Israeli society at large, whoever is there, Jews, Muslims, Christians, Druze, and all citizens of Israel. Rabbi Nir Barkin, the senior rabbi at Yozma, wrote that, he, that they are committed to doing their part to ease the ongoing conflict by continuing a dialogue with Israeli groups who are interested in finding common ground in a joint future. After the fall holidays, we will be engaging in two different important kinds of conversations. The first will be scheduled Zoom gatherings with Rabbi Barkin. He and I will invite you into conversation on varied topics, allowing our communities to get to know each other and to build anew our long-standing relationship. Yozma also invited us to be their partners in a program sponsored by the World Zionist Organization called Beit Ha'am, Films from Two Sides of the Lens. Over the course of the year, Barnard and Yozma will view three Israeli films that present different perspectives on Israeli society and then join together in discussion and learning. This program sounds fun and worthwhile, and I'm so glad that Yozma invited us to be their partners. Just imagine how wonderful it will be 
to spend Shabbat with our sister congregation, Yozma, when we are finally able to reschedule that trip to Israel. You know the saying, two Jews, three opinions. As a Reformed Zionist, I am proud that we come from a tradition that lifts up these multiple opinions. The Talmud is meticulous about recording the varied voices of our tradition, as the rabbis worked to resolve answers to tough questions. This is why we are taught that we must have within us a heart of many rooms, a way to make space for multiple opinions, and also the discomfort that often comes along with them. Reform Zionism embodies this necessary way of living in the end. We have space in our heads and our hearts of many rooms to stay connected with and to support Israel right now, while also focusing on how we can help to realize the Israel of our collective dreams. Is this Israel a utopian pipe dream? I'm not actually sure it matters what the answer is to this question. Rabbi Mark Rosenstein recently wrote that utopias are places that can never fully be realized. They help us keep our gaze on what we want, not on what we have, on what to do, and not on what we feel compelled to do, on dreams and not resentment or revenge, on taking responsibility and not assigning blame. On one of our longer bus trips, our tour guide told us about the white barn owls. These predatory birds were introduced by an Israeli scientist to help control a rodent problem in Kibbutzim that happened to border Jordan and the Palestinian, Palestinian territories toward the north of Israel. But owls don't know from borders. And when they flew out of Israel, they were being inadvertently poisoned by rodenticides in fields outside the kibbutz on Jordanian and Palestinian, Palestinian fields. The Israeli leader of this project sought out and cultivated partners in both places to launch a cross-border program that would benefit everyone. Like the timeless white dove, these white barn owls become a reminder that one way to build coexistence is to pursue work that supports the lives and livelihoods of all people. In this new year, I invite you to dream with me, as Reformed Zionists, of this utopian not-yet place, where all human life is revered, where all Jewish practice is respected, and where leaders and civilians collaborate in the pursuit of wholeness and peace. Our Israel needs us to be messengers of possibility and of tikva, of hope. And this tikva is at the heart of the dream of Reform Zionism, realized in the very name of Israel's national anthem, Hatikva, the hope. Recall these familiar words. Kol od balevav panima nefesh Yehudi homia, od lo avda tikvatenu. As long as the hearts within Jewish souls yearn, our hope will not be lost. Our hearts are open. Our Jewish souls yearn for what can be. Let's embrace the Israel of our timeless tikvah.